Well, good evening, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino, and we have a beer right here in front of me from Barley Days Brewery in Picton, Ontario. Ordered this right off the Barley Days uh, website. Uh, this is a collaboration with Alora, actually. I did not know that. Um, so, a seasonal collaboration beer. This is their Pumpkin Bock at uh, 6 point... 6.8% alcohol. Uh, reading the ingredients is going to be impossible on this. Hop yeast, pumpkin. Okay, so basically it just says malted barley, hop yeast, pumpkin spices. But yeah, it, it's using black text, and it's going over the gray and white, and it's just not... I know I'm blind and all, but that's just not right. Uh, so this is kind of out of season now. Uh, seeing as most pumpkin beers come out in October and it is December. But it's great to get a pumpkin beer at uh, this time of year for me. Usually, for me a pumpkin beer is either hit or miss. I'm either going to love it, or I'm going to hate it. And uh, all in all, of the beers I've gotten out of this package, They've all been solidly brewed beers. They've just not been beers that uh, I particularly would uh, would enjoy. So I'm hoping for something different out of this. Beautiful color, that beautiful amber red color. A um, little bit of haze, not all that much, but a little bit of haze. Beautiful off-white head. Nice snap, crackle, pop. This is a very nice looking beer. Scent. Cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, allspice, ginger. Basically, your pumpkin pie spices. Just all popping on there. There's nothing else though. I'm not picking up molasses or, uh, or caramel or... Uh, any earthy notes or anything else that you would uh, associate with a balk. I'm not really picking up pumpkin itself, but I mean pumpkin is, pumpkin in a beer is mostly for the mouthfeel. Uh, really, I'm just smelling the spices, and it's the cornucopia of spices. I'm not picking up clove, though, and that is the kicker for me. I don't like clove in my pumpkin beers, and I'm not picking it up off of the nose. It might even be in there, but it's just not there for me nose-wise. Out of the bottle, Out of the bottle, nutmeg, allspice, ginger, vanilla. And that's it. Uh, I lose the cinnamon. Um, and I gain vanilla. I'm okay with that. It's a good trade-off. So there we go. If you ever wondered, the uh, old Cameron's uh, Bruegel glasses, as long as there's no head, it can hold 650 milliliters of beer. Let's see if I can get it in my mouth without spilling it, though. Cheers, guys. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Meniscus, meniscus, meniscus. The meniscus held. That is rather nice, to be honest with you. Rather nice is kind of an understatement. That's one of the better pumpkin beers I've had all year. Now, I've only had a couple this year because, as most of you know, I like to drink new beers more than anything else. So, at this juncture of my, of my uh, beer... Ventures. There's not many new beers for me, and especially pumpkin beers. They 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 seem to be slowing down. But this this is a beautiful little pumpkin bock. You get a little bit of that caramel up at the forefront, and a nice uh, a nice roasty earthiness on the back end. So you get those you get those balks balk taste. You get that nice caramel forefront. You get that nice earthy back end. Very balkish. Uh, mouthfeel, medium mouthfeel, but silky at the same time. The pumpkin shows itself that way. Excuse me. Cinnamon, nutmeg, 
ginger and vanilla coming off spice wise. So I smelt I smelt allspice um, all the way through both bottle and glass, and I don't taste allspice. There is a little bit of a uh, kind of peppery dryness on the back end with the with that with that earthiness. There's this peppery dryness on the back end that could be cloves. It does kind of give off that uh, that that slightly slightly dry, slightly metallic flavoring that I, I do get off of a lot of. Uh, a lot of say, um, well, Belgian beers that use cloves. Uh, it it does have that flavor profile back there, but I'm not sure if they're there or not because I don't smell them. And again, I'm I, I'm somewhat uh, I'm somewhat sensitive to them because I don't like them. So I I would think I could smell them. It, it's a beautiful smelling beer, but I don't think it's 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 uh, overpowering enough on the nose to hide something I hate. Six point five percent alcohol. So if you're looking to get drunk, you can do the job. If you're looking to just drink one beer and have some good times with your friends, it can do the job. If you're looking for just a sipper, it can do the job. Uh, the nice flavors in here, the nice spice flavors as well as the Bach flavors, will will pair with food fairly well. Uh, I I could see it being very good with some seared meat. And it's sweet enough that it could be it could be paired with dessert. It could be an an aperitif, if you will. Um, all in all, I'm I'm really really fine with this beer. I really enjoy it. Of the package of beer that was sent to me so far from uh, well that, that I bought so far from Barley Days, this is easily the best <laughs> best beer in the package so far. I do have uh, two left. Um, their IPA and their Oyster Stout. So maybe I'll change my mind on one of those, but as of right now, this is by far the best beer I, I've had out of them. Uh, out of 10 on this, ooh. One more sip because I'm, I'm mulling between two numbers here. And you know what? That earthiness and that dryness on the back end, just a little too overpowering for me to give it a 9 out of 10. So I'm going to give it an 8.75. Barley Day's Pumpkin Bock, 8.75 out of 10 from the Rhino. I really do enjoy this, and I would buy this again. Thank you, guys. Bye.